And we get to return to Dungeons & Dragons, which is fun. I got back into Magic because of the Dungeons & Dragons set last year. Um, it was all downhill from, from there. It was the easy way to like get in and, and find some comfort with uh, Magic the Gathering. And I've gone back and visited older sets and I've continued to stay up to date with the current meta and standard and, and pro leagues and limited environments. Um, so usually when I have a pre-release set, I like to, um, I'll show you how I like lay out all my cards. I like to have a little half boulder at the ready so I can, you know, stand and protect some, uh, mythics or, or potentially bomb cards off to the side. Um, yeah, I'm going to move. So I bought two of these. Um, but one of them to open on stream and build a deck with and the other one to have a nice little at home pre-release event uh, with friends and family my brother is camping this weekend so we're gonna have to wait might do that next weekend next weekend is the weekend of the 11th okay the weekend after that is the Magic Fest, Vancouver. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, so let's open this bad boy up. These new packages that WotC has developed, I absolutely love. I love the, the use of the space. I love the, the minimal size. We used to have like, I have some stuff randomly here. Like bundle packages used to be this big and now they're like, quite a bit shorter you get rid of they got rid of all the like useless like little cardboard box here at the bottom um so they're really like taking into account how to design these packages oh got a little couple ships heading into the port at Baldur's Gate there I love this dual logo Dungeons and Dragons ampersand. I know I'm so excited. I'm so excited and it's just like one day. I wish it was all weekend. But I'm excited. I don't think I'm going to play much. I'm just going to go and soak it in. Hopefully uh, meet some local folks. Talk magic. So you slide this bad boy out and this is your little deck box with uh, all your stuff in it. We'll take a look at that in a second. And this thing has all of these little punch outs for counters. It's got shield counters on this side. We've got more shield counters, more shield counters. Oh, those aren't shield counters. That's the set symbol. I guess you can use them for whatever you want then. Uh, I'm just going to fold this back up, put it off to the side. I have this like tiny little collection of bundle boxes and, and pre-release boxes over here with some secret layer stuff. I just like magic packaging. Maybe it's just a uh, around myself with the thing I'm obsessed about. Oh yeah, I also got, so I did a Twitch or a Twitter poll. I also got the new starter kit. One of the, the biggest videos on my YouTube channel is me reviewing the original starter kit. So I got the new one, um, but Twitter voted to do a Baldur's Gate sealed deck build. So we're gonna do that. We've got our spin down. Oh, actually, it's not a spin down because it's a Dungeons and Dragons set. A nice little uh, set symbol. Don't mind my gross hands. Hello. Camera. Camera. Come on, bud. 
There we go. Got the set symbol on it. The spin downs in the pre release kits are never exciting. The spin downs in the bundles are exciting. We got this one um, with the new Capenna set, and this is like one of our favorite uh, spin downs in this household. Pretty good. Got the Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realm spin down from the, I believe this was the special, the gift edition. And then I went into my LGS that I like, not the one I dislike. And they actually just let me like straight up trade with like one for one a bunch of duplicate spin downs that I had for some unique ones that I wasn't around to collect. I really like the Kaldheim one too. It's very textured. Anyway, I like giant oversized spin downs. The ones in the pre-release kits are always like a single color, like that speckled marbled um, kind of dye that's pretty common. So inside here, we're going to have a little filler. This is just an empty plot. Yep. So this will hold your, your deck once you're done building it and your sideboard because you're allowed to sideboard if you're playing uh, best of three. Oh, thanks for coming to the pre-release six. Oh, -ho. got a code. Anybody wants some uh, Baldur's Gate? Go for it. You can only do, you can only uh, redeem one pre-release code per uh, account and I have another pre-release kit over there. So this one's all yours So this is oh we got a nice little map of Baldur's Gate Even the most hardened adventurers watch their steps in Baldur's Gate Where lives hold prices in copper and greed proves deadlier than dragon fire That's my kind of place We've got the upper city, uh, which is over here. Lower city, and then the outer city. The upper city says, uh, Upper city's beautiful parks and elegant mansions are isolated by thick walls and heavily guarded gates. Only aristocrats and their servants are allowed here. Lower city says, By day, the chaotic streets of lower city are filled with the bustle and trade of commerce. By night, folks bar their doors while cultists, murderers, and thieves ply their dark trades. Oh, damn. And the outer city reads, Without the protection of the walls of the town, town guard, folks of the outer city form tight-knit communities to survive. Those who go it alone are easy victims for the criminals and cultists who plague this city. And then on the back here, we've got Commander Draft Tips, which are important because we're playing Commander Draft. This is a, a Commander set. Uh, commander Draft is just like a normal draft, except each pack has 20 cards. And you'll select two cards for every pick. Try to identify potential commanders early and focus on those colors. When you're done choosing cards, build a 60 card deck. And this is part that's very important. It says duplicates are allowed. This might be a commander set, but when you play sealed or draft commander, you're allowed to have duplicates. This is not a singleton format when you're drafting. Um, but you do have to maintain the rule of, you know, only one or potentially two commanders if you have partners and everything in your deck has to be in your commander's color identity which is why they 
put the faceless one in here the last commander legend set we had um the piper which was a colorless commander that could take on one color um so if you don't find any commanders that you want to play in your sealed packs then you can play the faceless one which just means you can build whatever color you want because you can choose what color the faceless one is um and then this kind of gives you a rundown on creatures and spells and then land it says add a balance of lands to your deck according to your commander's color identity usually around 25 for a 60 card deck you can get the basic lands from a tournament organizer when in doubt ask for advice so other than the special land per pack we're not going to see any there's no lands in this bundle um you have to get lands from either a your turn term tournament organizer or just bring your own lands i like bringing my own because i like the um the eternal night lands from Innistrad. So this is your card divider and then ooh we've got our our box topper. What do they call um promo foil. Let's see what we get. So usually when you're doing a pre-release or a sealed event like this, your your box topper does a good job of steering you in a direction. Um, usually it's a powerful card and you want to kind of lean towards whatever it is because you want to play your, your powerful cards in sealed events. So we've got, uh, a token for the Undercity, which is the new dungeon that, um, interacts with your initiative, which is kind of like Monarch plus some. And then on the other side is the initiative token. The description reads, um, whenever one or more creatures a player controls deals combat damage to you, that player takes the initiative. So like the monarch, it gets traded back and forth. And then it says, whenever you take the initiative and at the beginning of your upkeep, venture into the undercity. You have to maintain control over the initiative before your turn starts. Not an end of turn ability like Monarch, which let you draw cards. And then you go through the Undercity, which is this new dungeon. They've only added one dungeon, um, which to me is kind of a bummer. I think they could have like 10 different dungeons and have some fun with it, but we'll see. So that's the Undercity token, and then our box topper rare is... Boom! Oh, A little Grixis legendary. Zevlor Elturial Exile. One blue, black, red for a 4-2 Tiefling Warrior with haste. Uh, whenever you cast... Or two and tap to whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a single opponent or a single permanent, an opponent controls this turn. For each other opponent, choose that player or permanent they control. Copy that spell and that copy targets the chosen player or permanent. That's pretty hype. He's like a spell duplication, um, an errant thief style card. That's awesome. Camera refocus. Thank you. That's really cool. I think that's going to potentially be a big deal as we build out this deck because I like spells and I like duplicating spells. Put this off to the side. Um, I'm just actually going to go... Before we open this up, I'm going to grab some water. I forgot my water glass, so I will be right back.
right. Water has been acquired. I feel like I don't know where to put this microphone when I'm sitting on this end of my desk. I can't put it up because then the camera's gonna get cut off a little bit. Anyway, so we opened a hype Grixis commander, potentially. Oh, right, we're playing commander. I keep forgetting. Commander, commander. So, very high potential that Zevlor is our commander of choice. So let's just start opening these bad boys and see if anything can pull us away from Zevlor. What I usually like to do is uh, I lay everything out by color. Uh, and then like colorless, I keep my fancy lands off to the side and then we kind of just look and see what colors we can play within. But because this is commander, I should pull out all of my legendaries that I open and we can reassess whether or not, um, whether or not we want to go with our promo foil or not. Ooh, we got a gate. Those are fun. That's a white or another color. Clockwork Fox. That's fun. Another gate. Breath Weapon. Deals two damage to each non-dragon creature. That's pretty powerful. We don't have any dragons yet, though. Mold Folk. Oh, I love this guy. Fungus Warrior. Great Sword of Tiger. Nice little piece of equipment there. Jade Orb of Dragon Kind. Oh, we're getting a nice spread of uh, cards here. Oceanist Dragon. Hell yeah. One of every color so far. Got uh, some schematics. Some schmaz. Vicious Battle Rager. Old Dwarf Barbarian. Worms Crossing Patrol. Editor Impetus. Anti creature gets plus three, plus three, must be blocked if able and is goaded. Huh. Grey Harbor Merfolk. Love it. We've got an Abdel. Um, oh, I forgot to look. These are these are draft boosters. Okay, not set boosters. Abdel Adrian, Gorium's Way. Legendary creature enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-land permanents you control until Abdel Adrian leaves the battlefield. Create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token for each permanent exiled this way. Hmm. And you can choose a background. Oh, that's one thing to note about uh, this friendly guy here is that there's no background choice for him. So if he does wind up being our commander, he's going to have to be our commander all by himself. So there's a legendary banishment. Oh, juvenile mist dragon. We got some got some dragons. We got will blade of frontiers. Human Warlock, if you would roll one or more die, instead roll that many die plus one and ignore the lowest. Whenever you roll one or more die, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Will. And I can choose a background. And for our background, we got Noble Heritage. Commander creatures you own with have when this creature enters the battlefield, put two 1-1 one, one counters on a creature they control. Each opponent... Oh, wait. When this creature enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put 1-1 one, one counters on creatures they control. For each opponent who does, you gain protection from that player until the next turn. That is anti-group hug right there. And then we've got a Caves of Chaos Adventurer. And our foil is... A Val Candle Keep Researcher. Human Wizard Vigilance. 
tap to add the any add an amount of colorless equal to Val candle keeps toughness this mana can't be spent to cast spells from your hand oh interesting and then we've got another undercity token all right that's a pretty uh pretty decent but my camera's blocking my lands right now but uh i promise you they're there so we didn't get any normal lands at all just the we got two gates we've got some interesting legendaries we can play two of these legendaries in our Zevlor deck, which is important to note. We might not have to pivot at all, but I do like the idea of playing with the backgrounds. I think that's a really cool new mechanic. And then as far as our Wooberg cards, we've got a couple dragons. Um, Caves of Chaos, like all our rare fits in our color identity. We've got dragons in our color identity and we've got this moldy boy. And then we've got multiple ways to get initiative in our color identity. Not doing too bad so far. Little package ASMR. Shout out to uh, loading ready run. What do we got? We got Fire Diamond. Hello? Camera. Help me. Hey, there we go. Fire Diamond. Uh, this one enters the battlefield, taps, add a red. The Mana Rock. But it's got that cool new art style. Prize statue. Uh, whenever it enters or is put into the graveyard, uh, create a treasure. Not bad. Sturge, insect bat, flying, can't block. And then it's got blood drain, pay one life, sacrifice Sturge, draw a card. Dawnbringer cleric, little reprint. Oh, we lost. I'll start fuck us again. Man. Yeah, the art book stuff looks real good. These uh the five diamonds that they made are just so clean looking. Really, really appreciate them. Dawnbringer Cleric. Ooh, a Colossal Badger. This is our first adventure card. When that Colossal Badger ETB is, you gain three life. He's a giant badger boy. Surprised they didn't make him a dog like they did the Tanuki. Uh, we got Manor Gate. Green or another color. We got or the Red Orb of Dragon Kind. Could be useful. Uh, we got a Cat Rogue. Definitely playing that. Uh, Goliath Paladin. Giant Knight. Take the initiative. Sylvanus Invoker, untap target land you control. It becomes an 8-8 elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn. Not a bad card. Dream Fracture, counter target spell X controller draws a card. You get to draw a card. Shiny Impetus, enchanted creature gets 2-2 two -two and is goaded. Whenever enchanted creature attacks you, create a treasure token. Oh, whenever an enchanted creature attacks, the person who owns this enchantment creates a treasure. That's pretty good. Another rogue, Zentarum Bandit. Uh, whenever it attacks, you may pay one life. If you do, create a treasure. Renari, Merchant of Marvels, Dragon Artificer. You may cast dragon spells and artifact spells as though they had flash. Choose a background. Oh, dang. That could be interesting. Cone of Cold, nice little roll to freeze. Got a monk. And oh, we got Glunch. Look at the Flumpf boy. Glunch the Bestower. This is a group hug on crack, this card. 
At the beginning of your end step, choose a player. They put two 1-1 one -one counters on a creature they control. Choose a second player to draw a card, then choose a third player to create two treasure tokens. It's Glunch. We got the Glunch, and we got a background Master Chef. Commander creatures you own have this creature enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one -one counter on it, and other creatures you control enter the battlefield with an... So he's feeding his army well, is all that means. And then we've got a Mythic Battle Angels of Tear. This is the Flying uh, Angel Knight with a Myriad. That's pretty hype. And then we've got Erinesis' Bile Duplication. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Except the token has flying and isn't legendary. That's going to be key. Key right there. Another Undercity token. Are they really going to put an Undercity token in every pack? I hope not. I need a Boo token. So, we're still looking pretty good. Oh, camera. Hello? There we go. We're still looking pretty good. Um, our blue and black are definitely strong. We've got some strong blue legendaries and some strong red legendaries. Well, one strong red legendary. Glunch is white green, so that's the complete opposite of where we're going. I do like a couple of these green cards, but I don't think... I don't think I want to force it. Right, so last pack here. These packages are pretty cool. I like doing Commander Sealed. Limited Commander gameplay is fun. Last pack, we've got Bronze Walrus. Well, you almost had it, camera. Come on now. There we go. Bronze Walrus. Ooh, a Trailblazer Torch. Astral Confrontation. You meet in a tavern. Another reprint that's pretty good. Ooh, Command Tower. Nice. Hoarding Ogre. That's going to be good. Oh, a Salad Boy. Frog Horror. As long as there are four more cards, creature cards in your graveyard, sl Salad has Menace and Death Touch. And then you can mill four cards as an adventure. Love that. One of my top picks um, coming out of my set review. Did I lose the focus on the salad boy? There we go. Gray salad. Really, really like him. Roving Harper. Got a Basilisk Gate. Nimble Claw Adept, another dragon. Well, that'll be handy with our ass dragons. You've been caught stealing. Arms of Hadar. Creature creatures target player controls. Oh, it's like a single target board wipe. And then we've got a faceless one. That can be your commander if you need. Ooh. We got the rules text or what is it called? The game modu module. Uh, version of the fireball spell. Fireball reprint. There's lightning bolt reprint in here somewhere too, which is awesome. We've got a campfire. Take a long little rest. We've got cloud kill. All creatures get minus X minus X until end of turn where X is the greatest mana value of a commander you own on the battlefield or in the command zone. Pretty good. We got OG. OG. The Exquisite Blade. 
human monk commander. We got another white background, inspiring leadership. And then our rare is Wizards of Thay, human wizards with myriad instants and sorcery spells you cast. Cost one less to cast. You may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. Love to see it. And then our foil is Flaming Fist, legendary enchantment background. Command creatures you own have whenever this creature attacks, it gains double strike. The end of turn. And then we got a construct token and nothing. Oh. What is that construct? Look at the art on this guy. So interesting. Like a weird monk, dapper pirate monk thing. Very interesting. Well, so I don't think we saw anything that wants us to steer away from Zevlor. That's for sure. Right out of the gate. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to make sure that my blue and red and black cards are all sleeved up and then we'll take another look at it as a full stack remember we're looking for a 60 card sealed deck oh my camera hello There we go. We got some interesting blue stuff. We've got enough dragons. There was a card in here that made dragons cheaper to cast or cast us with flash. We got some interesting rogues. Ocean is dragon enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls and goad it. A little bit high on the mana value on some of these. Uh, let's go through our legendaries. Okay, we've got uh, Dragon Commander. We've got add an amount of colorless. And then we've got roll multiple die. I don't know if the roll multiple die is going to come into much effect in this deck. But we did, we do have a couple of die roll cards. So we will see. I don't think any of these legendaries are. I definitely don't have enough of one single color to do a single color deck. Um, and the backgrounds that I do have are both white, I believe. Oh no, I got a green one as well. We could do blue green. We could do blue white. Um, we didn't get any black legendaries. I guess we could use faceless one, which is the whole point of them, including it. Um, yeah, got some good stuff. And then we'll sleeve up our black as well. I think we're still focusing on Building something with Zevlor. Because that is a fun duplicate cards. Duplicate spells deck. We've got some cat rogues and insect bats. Our deck kind of leans into like wanting to make treasures. I feel like if we're going sub theme. We're definitely going to have to lean into the treasures. Got stuff like Hoarding Ogre here, Shiny Impetus. All that stuff is, is really good. Uh, we got some Dragon Kind orbs. Uh, 
Uh, we got a couple of ways to get the initiative, which is good. We've got a couple ways to deal blind damage, which is also good. I'm going to put these guys aside. I'm going to sleeve up these guys with some normal sleeves. And I think I'm going to put these guys aside too. We did get one mythic. The Battle Angels of Tyre. Pretty cool card. Hello? I don't know how to make this function faster. I feel like I'm just like... Anyway. Battle Angels of Tyre. We did open a mythic and... It's an angel. So there's that. Put this stuff together over here. And then we can look through our artifacts. Campfire is pay one to gain two life or exile. Put all commanders you own from the command zone and from your graveyard into your hand. That's interesting. Uh, when Trailblazer's Torch enters the battlefield, take the initiative. Whenever equipped creature becomes blocked, it deals two damage to each creature blocking it. Less interesting. Uh, oh, Bronze Walrus is a mana dork. When Bronze Walrus ETBs, scry two, and then you can tap to add one mana of any color. Kind of interested in that. Uh, prize statue... You pay two mana to create a treasure. And then when it dies, you create a treasure. And it does nothing otherwise. Which is sad. Fire diamond add red. Yep, we're in red. Uh, when nimble right schematic enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard, create a 1-1 one -one construct. Eh. Then we've got Clockwork Fox. When it leaves the battlefield, draw two cards, and each opponent draws one card. Meh. Big mez all around for the artifacts so far. We got a couple that aren't too bad. Let's look at our gates. So add colorless or pay two to give target creature plus X plus X, where X is the amount of gates you control. Probably not going to use that because i don't have a ton of gates command tower is for sure going in manor gate is a no because it's green deep gate is tap to add colorless or pay one i'm not going to use any of my gates i don't think this one's Got mana fixing, so you pay one to change it into another color. Or you can pay one to tap another gate you control to create a treasure token, but we're not playing any gates so far, so it looks like in the Boulder's Gate set, we're going gateless. And then our commander is one blue, black, red. Which uh, seems to be pretty good. Well, let's take a look at our numbers so far. I've never done a commander, like a 60 card sealed deck before, so I'm not sure. When I look at a sealed pool or a draft pool, I can like pretty quickly tell that I'm over or under the needed amount of cards in a certain color, but as I'm looking to have 35 in this specific case, I don't know by just looking at it. Hard to eyeball. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix all of my colors. 
First off, let's just do an overall head count. We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 8, 30. But we're already short. This thing told me to put 25 lands in it, right? Add a balance of lands to your deck according to your commander's a color identity, usually around 25. So that would leave 35 cards playables. And I have 30 playables. One of them is a land, so that doesn't count. I have 29 playables. I just add that a whole bunch of extra lands. So let's let's lay all this out and see. Um, so we've got artifacts over here, creatures, artifact, creature. Oh, two instance, creature, artifact, enchantment, creature. Sorcery, sorcery, hey, we got a one, we got a one drop, a cat rogue, halfling rogue, gray salad, uh, we've got another sorcery here. Ooh, a six mana sorcery? Dang. Uh, we've got Val. We've got Renari. We've got Oceanist Dragon. Merfolk Rogue. Juvenile Mist Dragon. Uh, Dream Fracture. Three mana sorcery. Four mana sorcery. Four mana sorcery. Four mana dragon. And a four mana human wizard. So our mana curve is not good. It's not good. These cards, these sleeves are too shiny. Um, we're shy on playables and our mana curve is terrible, but there's no good way to pivot. I guess we have to add stuff like the clockwork fox. I say we add trailblazers torch. Rise statue, because that's just treasure. And then we can't add any of those. No point in adding any gates. So that puts us up to 32 playables. Plus our commander is 33, so maybe we just do that. And that gives us 27 lands instead of 25. I suppose we'll run it that way. That's kind of a less exciting uh, deck build. If I'm being honest, I don't, there's not a lot of decisions to make, nothing to cut. Um, our mana curve is roughly terrible and I don't suppose this as long as we ramp and get up to this four spot I think we're really strong especially like even considering our commander is a four drop but is gonna be tricky but once we get up there, we've got a walrus that ramps us. We've got um, a 
prize statue that gives us treasure. We've got dra an orb of dragon kind that casts us some dragons. Uh, we've got a fire diamond. We've got shiny impetus, which could lead to us getting more treasures. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's terrible. I just think it's un exciting. So what's our So the net the la the last question is land. We we need twenty seven lands and so I'm going to what I usually do is I take the whole deck and then I just start putting them in color piles. Uh, that's colorless, red, blue, black. I mean, we're pretty even. There's a couple of blue pips, so we might have to lean a little, wait. How did that blue card get there? We might have to lean blue just slightly. Um, okay, at 27. So we're looking at like nine-ish cards. Nine-ish lands per color. Two, four, six, eight. Eight black, two, four, six, eight, ten blue, two, four, six, eight red. We already have more blue. And there's one, two, three, three cards with double pips. One black card with double pips. And no red with double pips. So if we do nine islands, here is my little box of fun. There it is. These are my draft lands. So if we do two, four, six, eight, nine, we'll get a tenth. Two, four, six, eight, nine swamps, two, four, six, seven, eight mountains. And I've got more. I've got more. So, how many do we have here? Two, four, six, eight, nine. We'll do ten, nine, and eight. I think that'll be good. I think there's plenty there. Just put them, we'll sleeve them up and do the math over again. And again, this is a little, 
bit of a bummer because there's not we didn't get to make really any choices but I also didn't want to like I wanted to build the best deck available to us I feel like it would be disingenuine if I didn't and the best deck just happened to be the one with our promo foil and every card in the three colors plus some artifacts uh, that we opened. I feel like that's kind of a bummer. Not a lot of strategy in that. But I guess that's how it goes sometimes. If I was at, like, an event, um, I'd probably be sort of happy that it was this easy. Wouldn't have to stress about making the wrong picks or, or doing the wrong thing. But, uh, trying to make some content, it feels a little weird. Then we've got... Mountains, so we went down one mountain, up one island. And then we've got a command tower, which gives us anything. We've got a walrus that gives us anything. Yeah, we'll just finish sleeving these up and then do the math and make sure Make sure we've got the full 60 here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, twenty, two, four, six, seven. Yep. And then let's mix them up. Oh wait, no. We need to replace our command tower with something. We'll probably take out a red. Yeah, let's take out a swamp or a mountain, sorry. That's 27 lands. And then add it all up. Give it one nice little shuffle. And then we do the math one more time. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, twenty. Two, four, six, eight, thirty. Two, four, six, eight, forty. Two, four, six, eight, fifty. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Plus our commander is sixty. So that's that's all she wrote. Um if if I manage to put together a spell table commander match with uh, somebody, anybody, um, I will be sure to let y'all know on my socials. I'll put this deck up on my mox field so you can pick it apart if you feel like it or copy it. Um, yeah, major shout out to Wizards of the Coast for bringing us this epic set. I'm very excited to dive into it and play more Commander if I get the opportunity to. I wonder if it's just like trying to focus on these faces. This is our big promo. It's a pretty cool card. Um, yeah, sorry this wasn't more exciting. Sorry we didn't get to make more critical decisions. All just here in the meat and potatoes of our, the packs that we opened. I, I 
appreciate those that came to hang out. I hope y'all have an amazing rest of your Sunday or whatever day it is, wherever you are. Um, be kind and respect others. Show compassion. Tell your friends and your family that you love them. And I guess we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.